So here's a list of five cheap things that everyone should have. Now we got a lot of toys here. None of this stuff is expensive. And as I go around, not all of you have these things, but you really should. Let's take a look. All right, so right off the bat, here's something that not enough of you have. It's this little thing here. What is this? It's a 0.965 to inch and a quarter adapter. Why do you need one of these things? Well, if you hang around in this hobby long enough, eventually someone is going to come up to you and say, I have a telescope at home, but we've never been able to figure out how to use it. <laughs> it's going to be a friend, it's going to be a family member, it's going to be your neighbor. Eventually, someone's going to say this to you, and the way that they say it, those of you who've been in the hobby long enough know exactly what that is. They have a department store grade junk scope that has those awful .965 inch eyepieces. This at least gives you a fighting chance to get that thing working. Now you're still fighting an uphill battle because most of the time those junk scopes have awful mounts. They just won't hold the optical tube steady. You're never going to be able to hold it steady to find something or even sometimes to you know, draw the focuser in and out. But again, you have a fighting chance to use it by using your normal inch and a quarter eyepieces. So when you do this, I do want to caution you about one thing. This has some length to it. Obviously it does. And since you're pushing things out a little bit, you're going to have to rack the focuser in just a little bit more. And if you have a, an inch and a quarter diagonal like this one here, and you put it in here, the inch and a quarter diagonal is by definition larger than the 0.965 inch diagonal. So even more light travel is going to be consumed when you use this thing. So as a result, you may have to come very far in to focus. Now, the whole time I've been doing this, I've never had a telescope have to come so far in that you couldn't find focus at all with the eyepieces, but it could happen. In a case like that, you could carry also around with you one of these. This is a hybrid diagonal. It's 0.965 inches at one end, and it's an inch and a quarter at the other. I find this to be a lot less of an elegant solution than this because you're dependent on the quality of this diagonal here, which usually isn't very good. And for some reason, these things cost a lot. And I don't know why, it's usually a cheap diagonal. This is a plastic body. These things go for as much as $60. These things here sell for under $20. If you're willing to take a chance from something from China, very often they're under $10. So try this first, but you need one of these in your eyepiece case. Okay, next on the list. Here's a case of three individual items that you probably do have with you, but I'm suggesting you need to double up on them, and I'll show you why. So the first one is a planisphere. So unless you're completely committed to a digital form of using your, a guy to go to the night sky, you really do need a planisphere because this is very convenient. You dial in the time and the date, and you get a quick look as to what happens to be up that night. This is my favorite of them. This is called the Guide to the Stars. It's 30 or $40. This thing is so large, and it shows you so much that it almost functions as a de facto small star atlas. And it's a bunch of information on the back. It's got some trivia. It's got some mythology there that you can look at. But the reason that you need two of these is, and I've been through this so many times, they have a tendency to get lost in the dark. They fall in between the seat cushions of your car or you drop them somewhere and they land on the ground and it's dark, you don't find one anymore. It's good to have a second one around. And especially if you're teaching somebody, you can have them dial this up alone by themselves following along with you and you can sort of teach them the night sky as you go along. Now, the second thing I'm suggesting you double up on is your binoculars. Hopefully most of you here already have a pair of binoculars for you know, quick looks or perhaps it was even your first telescope. But I'm suggesting that you carry a couple of these around for the same reason that you have the planispheres is that you can share the views. You can say, okay, now I'm gonna look here. I'm gonna give you this pair and let's look over there. Let's see if you can find the Andromeda galaxy. Let's see if you can find the moon. So instead of having to pass this thing back and forth, you guys can use this thing together. Now you notice here, I have a lot of binoculars here. I do not own any high-end binoculars. This is all relatively inexpensive stuff, and in this case, really inexpensive stuff. This is a Celestron Land Scouts, seven by 35s. I think these cost me all of $29. An old pair of Orion Shore views. These are eight by 42s. 
And I might even suggest that you carry a third pair with you, and the third pair gets something really, really cheap. These are 8x21s. They're not very good. And the reason you carry these around is in case there are any kids around, you go, Mommy, I want to I want to do this too, I want to do this too. You can hand this to the kid. And the reason for that is I've had cases where these just sort of walked off on their own and they never came back. So if that happens to a pair of binoculars, even $29 binoculars are going to be a little bit hard to take when they lose. But these things often sell for less than $20 and sometimes even less than $15. They're 8 by 20 ones. I don't know if they take them on purpose or not, but they do tend to disappear on you. So that's why you need another pair of binoculars. And the third thing, and this is the most important one of all, is your red flashlight. I know what you're thinking. We all know you need a red flashlight. I know, but I'm suggesting you need at least two of these because those of you who've been doing this for a while know these things will fail on you at the worst possible moment. And they, they fail on you in some very creative ways. You know, this band here dries out. I've had this completely break in half on me. I've had the band here choose this moment to sort of dry out. And so you, you pull it and then it never springs back and it falls down and you're wearing a necklace. But the worst thing that happens is that the battery wears out. And when these things wear out, it depends on which uh, you know, red light you have. Sometimes they just die, but sometimes they default to a white light. I don't know why they do that, but you're going to be right in the middle of a star party, and you're going to turn this thing on, and it's going to be white, and you're going to upset everybody. So you do need to have a second set of these around, possibly even a third pair as well. Now, these are black diamond Cosmos. I don't know if you should copy me on that. This is just the one that I've standardized on. I haven't done enough research on red headlights, so if anybody has one that they really like, put that in the description below so that we can all see it. I'm willing to change. Okay, here's one that's a real pet peeve of mine. I have people who write me all the time. I just bought a C8. I just inherited a Mead 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain. What eyepieces do I need to buy for it? And I always say, whoa, hold on a second. Before you buy the eyepieces, the one thing you have to do before you do anything else is replace this cheap, flimsy inch and a quarter visual back that they've been shipping on these things for the past 40 years or so. I don't know why they keep doing this. I really wish the industry would stop doing it, but this is the first thing you need to replace before you do anything else. So in case you don't know, the visual back is the device that couples your diagonal to the back of the optical tube. Now it actually is a pretty important piece, but this, the ones that they ship with, they, they, they clamp everything with a tiny little set screw. This one's actually better than most of them that I've seen. Some of the, they're really, really tiny. And the problem with this is twofold. Number one, everywhere entrusting everything that's after the visual back to this tiny little set screw. If you don't clamp down on that thing hard enough, things can flop over. I have seen things fall to the ground, your diagonal, your eyepiece, and I know some of you will run some very expensive diagonals. You don't want that happening to you. The second thing is, because there is no compression ring here, it's just a screw, you're going to mark up your diagonal. And if you have a schmidt cassegrain you know that you're constantly twisting and turning and retightening that diagonal based on the orientation of the optical tube. So over time, you're just going to be putting a lot of little pock marks inside your diagonal. Now, the thing I tell, uh, I tell people to buy is a 2-inch visual back. These are cheap. I've seen them... $20, $30. If you want to pay extra money for one that says Teleview on it, go right ahead. I, I did it. But it's a very simple device. It's just a threaded tube. This looks like it might not fit. It looks like it's not the same device, but it is. These, these threads do match up, and it's very simple. All you do is unthread the one that's on here, and I would toss it if I were you. I only would keep this thing around because for these demonstrations, and then you thread the new one on. Once you have the new one on, it has a two inch back and you can see that it has a compression ring on it also, so now you have a choice. You can either put a two inch diagonal and go with a two inch eyepiece if you wanted to, or you can use an inch and a quarter converter and then use an inch and a quarter diagonal and eyepiece. So I tell people that even if you don't want to use a two inch eyepiece, you, at least you have the option later on if you want to. You can upgrade later if that's what you want to do. So again, do this before you buy any other eyepieces. 
you're gonna see right away, as soon as you thread this thing on, it's gonna feel so much more secure and you're gonna feel a lot better about putting expensive stuff after the visual back. So I'll close this segment with a plea to the industry. Please, Schmidt Cassegrain manufacturers, stop supplying these cheap inch and a quarter visual backs and just give us a two inch visual back with all of your Schmidt Cassegrains. You could buy a C14 and it still comes with this thing that costs them, I don't know, probably next to nothing. It's not gonna cost you that much more to do this and you're gonna make your customers a lot happier. Please, take a look at that. Okay, those of you who have been around for a while know that I've been recommending these for a long time. You need one of these. What are these? <laughs> well, if you're in the hobby, you probably know what they are, but if you're not in the hobby or if you're new to this, these are webcam lunar planetary imagers. This is how you take pictures of the moon and the planets and the sun if you have proper filtration. I have a lot to say about webcam lunar planetary imaging, but I'm going to save that for another video because it's a rather involved topic. But with this simple device and a laptop running either sharp cap or fire capture, those are free, you can stack the videos using either Registax or AutoStackert, those are also free. So all you have to do, this is your only expenditure, you don't have to spend any more money, all of the software is free. So video is just a series of still images. And if you take images of the planets or the moon, the problem is that the atmosphere is always going back and forth. You don't know from one fraction of a second to the next how the seeing is. Well, if you take a video, it stands to reason some of those still frames are gonna be sharp, some of them are gonna be blurry, some of them are going to be in between. So the specialist software that we use, either AutoStackert or Registax, will page through your video, find the sharp ones, keep those, throw away the blurry ones, and it will stack the sharp ones. And the reason being behind this is that noise tends to be random. So the more frames you can stack together, the more the noise will have a tendency to cancel itself out. This is the best way to take images of the moon and the planets. Most people use them on Schmidt Cassegrains, but lately I've been trying to use refractors, good ones, with Barlow's, and I'm sort of experimenting with that. I get a, some decent images through these. I, I would rank my expertise in this field as modest at best. So the images of the moon that you're seeing here were taken through my Mead 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain, and the Jupiter and Saturn images were taken with C9 and a quarters and the Astrophysics AP130. And some of these are Takahashi FS102 images, but you get the idea, this works on anything. The other thing you can do with this is you can do outreach with it. I have sometimes shown up at a star party with a laptop running one of these on the moon, say, and you can say, look, look at the moon. You can see it live and you can see it shimmering around. So you can get a lot of people looking through your, your telescope at the same time effectively through the use of this instead of people having to take turns. Now, an additional benefit of this is you can, you can sort of secretly, while you're showing this, hit the record button and take video clips as you are showing this to people. So you're actually doing two at the same time. You're teaching people and you're getting data for yourself later to process. If you get involved later with deep sky imaging, these things can also be used as auto guiders. I have one of these, I have one on the red cat that you see back there. I took inventory. I have a lot of these things, as you can see. Aside from cheap 25 millimeter plossels that just came with telescopes, I have more of this item than I do of anything else. And if you get them, I would suggest you get the monochrome and you get the color one at the same time to see which one you like better. The model numbers are there below. These are not the only ones you can buy. The ZW01 ones are just the ones that I happen to use. So to recap, you can take stunning images of the moon and the planets. You can do outreach with it. You can do outreach and capture at the same time, and they can be used as auto guiders. Are you in love yet? They're only $149 each. And finally, one of the most common questions I get, period, what eyepiece should I get? I just bought a telescope. And when I tell them, very often it's not what they want to hear, but I'm telling you the truth. Everybody needs a first-rate 25 millimeter plossel. 
there's a reason a 25 millimeter plus hole comes with your telescope. Let's go ahead and pick on this guy. It's a Celestron 25 millimeter Elux. It's okay. What people tend to want to do is buy some really expensive high power eyepiece. And those of you who have been in the hobby for a while know those things get used seldom if ever. There's a reason a 25 millimeter eyepiece comes with most telescopes because it is the low power eyepiece. It's the one that you're going to wind up using all the time. And since it is the one you use most of the time, it makes sense to optimize your rig as much as possible for that 25 millimeter. So I'm gonna suggest that you get a first rate 25 millimeter Plossel. And those of you who know me know, my favorite is the Teleview. This is my favorite 25 millimeter general purpose eyepiece of all time. It's expensive, it's around $130 at the time of filming, but look, you only have to buy it once and you'll have it the rest of your life. This is a lifetime investment. So if you wanted to, if you're really jonesing to buy something expensive, you can stretch that idea of what a general purpose 25 millimeter eyepiece is like. For example, you could get a 24 millimeter panoptic. This is probably my favorite all purpose inch and a quarter 25 millimeter class of eyepiece. If you wanna go crazy, you can get a 27 panoptic. This might be stretching the definition of a general purpose 25 millimeter eyepiece, but maybe it's an honorary member of that group. Whatever that means to you, you need to get a keeper, an heirloom quality 25 millimeter eyepiece of some kind. Okay, folks, there you have it five cheap things that everyone needs. Do you have your favorite that I haven't covered here? Let us all know in the comments below. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.